Today we talk about Almeida and Busaco 1810, published by Exasim. This is a game in the Days of Glory system, a system that I discovered recently uh, playing Fuentes de Oñoro and a system that I immediately fell in love with, a system that I am enjoying a lot. Since I had so much fun playing the system in Fuentes de Oñoro, I also wanted to see how the system worked um, in other battles and so I decided to play this one, which is a package with actually three battles. The, the, the title is Almeida and Busaco, but there is also a scenario about Coimbra. So we are in 1810 and in the Peninsular War and um, well, um, I'm going to show you the scenarios in general. I'm going to show you what the action is going to be about, what the general flow of the game is, um, in my, of course, in my experience. Uh, but I'm not going to cover the basics of the Days of Glory system. Again, I did that not long ago in my review for Fuentes de Oñoro. So if you want to know the basics about the Days of Glory system, you can watch that review. I just don't want to repeat myself too many times. So today we're just going to talk about the scenarios that you find in this in this package about the way in which the Days of Glory system works when it is applied to these battles. Usually in my videos I show you the setup of the games but with my daughter being born not long ago just a couple of days ago uh, these are days of transition so I play when I can I turn here I turn there and I film where when I can um, also this luckily enough is a game that is extremely good played solitaire very easy to play as a solitaire game so I'm just playing this one in this period of transition and what you see here is the end of turn 5 but to give you a sense of how the game works at setup you will see the French forces that now are here and here that are mainly going to be placed in this area here <clears throat> The uh, Anglo-Portuguese forces are defending this area here, actually they are sort of like grouped in this area here, some are here and then there are some groups of units that are uh, in that area there and if you want those to join the action, well you have to move them all the way and where the action is. Here you have the Monastery of Busaco and here you have a series of slopes and steep increases in elevation that clearly will make it challenging for the French player to take control of that area. The French player is really trying to climb those uh, steep slopes and uh, the uh, Anglo-Portuguese player has a huge advantage there because of terrain. On the other hand, the troops of the Anglo-Portuguese player are overall, on average, less affected than those of the French player. And that is the trade-off, quality versus position. Both players here have um, not optional reinforcements but optional activations. Not all units that are on the map can be activated at the beginning of the game. Some uh, activation markers of some formations are left out of the activation cup. Players can choose to bring in those activation markers and in that way they will be able to use all their units but to do so means to give victory points to the opponent. So that is the trick. On the other hand, there are no enforcements. All units that participate to the fight are the ones that you see on the map at the beginning of the game. Um, what has happened so far in my game, so you also have a little bit of during action report. Well, the French tried to attack the uh, Anglo-Portuguese units here and it didn't go too well. One of the formations was virtually disintegrated, was demoralized very easily and very soon. Some units completely eliminated, some units are still uh, routing, trying to leave the map and then uh, the French side maybe realized that it wasn't such a good idea to charge frontally and started stretching around in this direction. In particular, in particular the French side was effectively in uh, pushing the Anglo-Portuguese units here. They really achieved a good breakthrough and they were getting ready to try to uh, move in this way to outflank the Anglo-Portuguese units here. But the units that were here were finally activated by the Anglo-Portuguese side and now these units are enforcing so the French units that are here and they were planning to attack these units now they're finding themselves in the middle the dilemma is what should they do should they try to keep the gap open and then they're defending on two fronts should they <clears throat> 
retreat, but in that case these units are going to join these other units and then the Anglo-Portuguese line is going to be even stronger. There are clearly challenges. In the meanwhile, these other units are trying to do on this side what has not been possible so far to do on that side, which is to outflank and to start pushing the flanks and see what happens. The Anglo-Portuguese side overall has had an easier time because uh, that side was defending such a good position. However, um, sometimes there are opportunities for attack that the Anglo-Portuguese side has wanted to uh, exploit, but to do so after you attack, some of your units will find themselves moving forward and then of course you have to reform the line before uh, it is the French side that takes advantage of that and cuts off your units that move forward to attack before those units are able to retreat back in a favorable position. So, so far the battle is very interesting, very, very fun to play. I have to say much more than I expected. The situation started uh, as a little static. It seemed a little static at first just because of the condition of the terrain, but it has turned out to be a real joy to play. Almeida 1810, the Battle of the Coa River, which is this river here. The game is played on this map and here you see the setup. All units that start on the board are here and they are all Portuguese units. All French units in the game enter the game as reinforcements starting from turn one. In the middle of the board you have two formations of Anglo-Portuguese units, two mobile formations and here you have three special units which are the guns of Almeida. Very good guns by the way, very powerful in case the French player gets in the range of those guns but they cannot move. On the other hand also it is impossible for French or Anglo-Portuguese units to enter the walls of Almeida. That is a forbidden area. Up there you have the French units that will enter the game respectively in turn 1, 2, 3 and 5 and they all enter from X1001. So look just at the sheer number of units that you have there and the Anglo-Portuguese units that are defending in the middle of the map. As you can see this is going to be an unequal confrontation. So for the Anglo-Portuguese player really this is not going to be so much a matter of winning the battle but to delay defeat enough to make the victory conditions. In this scenario um, you score points for elimination of enemy units, for routing enemy units, like in other scenarios in the game. Other special ways of scoring points are related to control of this area here on this side of the Kwa River. The Kwa River is impassable, it can only be <clears throat> passed at this bridge here. Now, the French player is going to score points for having units on this side of the river and for preventing the Anglo-Portuguese player from having units on this side of the river. So, uh, the Anglo-Portuguese player is trying to slow down and to delay the French advance as much as possible and terrain is not going to help with that. There are some changes in elevation here, some steep slopes, but definitely not a terrain that offers a lot of opportunities to uh, to put together a good defense and well you see the conundrum here if the uh, Anglo-Portuguese player defends in this area maybe in the hope of alluring the French units close to the guns then the French player can just move in that direction and can have an easy access to uh, the other side of the Coa River. On the other hand if the Anglo-Portuguese player concentrates defense in only one area then he can be easily outnumbered by the French units that can surround the Anglo-Portuguese units. As if that was not enough, the Anglo-Portuguese player can only issue one order per turn because such is the capacity of the commander of that side. In this scenario, the French commander can issue two orders, so that makes that commander better. The French forces have just a uh, better organization. On the other hand, the French player definitely is running against 
against the time because this scenario, <coughs> well, last, the scenario lasts 10 turns, um, which is pretty good, um, as opposed to the 8 turns of the Busago scenario. Well, but here you have such a small number of units that the turns go much faster and the scenario plays much faster than the Busako scenario. Still, 10 turns may not be all that much if there are problems with the orders and the commands. If the Anglo-Portuguese player does manage to slow down the units, then it is still quite a bit of terrain that the French units have to cover to get to the area where they really want to be. And this is the map and the setup for the Coimbra scenario. The uh, units that you see here are activation markers placed face down and they represent the civilian population of Coimbra that is trying to leave the city and to reach the side of the river um, by using that bridge there. Um, and the French player, of course, is trying to prevent that from happening, is trying to bring disruption and chaos to the Anglo-Portuguese maneuvers. Uh, these French units that are coming out of the marsh will try indeed to reach the civilian population of Coimbra. Uh, if they do so, they can easily eliminate the population and that is good between points for the French side. And of course, that also means that the Anglo-Portuguese player is trying to prevent that from happening, is trying to stop the French units. But this scenario is short. There are many turns that the French player has to complete the task. Uh, the French player is in marsh access at the beginning. That clearly doesn't help with movement. Reinforcements will be received by the French player, but not many, and reinforcements will enter from that hex there. Uh, also, reinforcements do not have a specific leader, the only commander on the map is that one, so that means that those units are out of command, um, and since they don't have orders, they will move very slowly down here, they may not be able to do anything at all. Let's say anything of consequence in the game. And if you're wondering what happened at the end of my Busako scenario, well, the French side won a solid victory, but I wouldn't have been able to tell until the very end. At the end of some turns, the French side seemed to have the upper end. At the end of other turns, the Anglo Portuguese side seemed to have a considerable advantage. The situation really seemed to swing back and forth, and that created a constant tension. A tension that honestly I uh, did not expect uh, from a historical situation that seemed at least potentially to be pretty static, that uh, there was the potential for the situation to be a little, uh, again, not too exciting completely false. There were still ways in which units could and had to interact with terrain. Uh, there were choices to be made about when you're going to bring in certain activation markers into the cup and that gives victory points to the other side. There are just still so many choices. The action developed slowly, that's for sure, but fluidly and definitely with a mounting sense of tension that really kept me hooked until the end. Uh, I played the game solitaire, the Busako scenario took me about an hour per turn, some turns a little less because units were rallying, many units couldn't do or shouldn't have done anything but rallying, so of course resolving those activations was fast, but I would say between 6 and 7 hours is what it took me to complete the scenario and those were hours of great fun really really great work gaming of what I really like about the system great balance between playability and historical feel uh, the game, the Busako scenario, comes with two smaller scenarios not as impressive, not as epic, also the fact that they played Busako first maybe was a mistake because then in comparison of course the other scenarios seem so limited maybe I should have played them in the opposite order in the reverse order but that didn't happen and I just found the two other scenarios to be smaller puzzles less uh, less exciting but faster to play and interesting puzzles if you are playing them solitaire so, uh, bottom line is that I found this game and this package to be a very good one if even just only for the Busako scenario. If you're not gonna play the other two ones, I still think that this is a good investment because that action is just so interesting and it just works so well. 
Uh, again, really nice balance between playability and a sense of an historical action that is taking place in front of your eyes and that you're interacting with in a variety of ways that you're going to, uh, to try to use. So, uh, I enjoy the Days of Glory system, I enjoyed it in the past, I enjoyed it here, definitely I enjoyed the way in which the system came to live in this scenario, I'm absolutely going to play more games in the system in the future, just because I find them absolutely remarkable, and I hope that one day you decide to give the system a try, and if you already know the system, then try Busako, that's a very fun battle to play.